Both sexes of the Homo sapiens species are born with nipples. The question is, can you beat Dark Souls 1, 2, and 3 all at once on one controller? Let me explain. About a month ago I decided to do a challenge run where I connected a PS5 controller to both Dark Souls 1 and 2 at the same time, and beat both games at the same time within about 7 hours. And since enough is never enough, I decided to do it with all 3 games this time. I was most perplexed with thinking about how to make it work properly, but ultimately this was my setup. Two screens. One screen with Dark Souls 3 running on PS5, and the other screen for my PC running both Dark Souls 1 and 2 simultaneously on one input. And yes, you heard it right, I beat the first two games simultaneously with one controller before. But like a fat kid opening a bag of Lay's, two is never enough. Now let me explain some ground rules. Rule number one, I have to finish all games at the same time, which means the final cutscenes must be only moments apart. Rule number two, progress in all games must be the same. If I'm too far along in one game, then I'll have to start all over again. Rule three, characters cannot idle unless it's absolutely unavoidable but this is bound to happen since I'm playing three games on a single input. In a terrible homage to the M. Night Shyamalan movie, Split, I named my first character Dennis and my other character Barry, and got ready for the torments that awaited me. While starting through the asylum, I fought Index Gundir, master of the debate team and champion of the spelling bee. I parried that soft nerd to death as I watched the cutscene from Dark Souls 2, and named my third character Patricia. Worked my way to Firelink Shrine as I was on my way to Firelink Shrine, and grew excited because I knew the nightmare had just begun. Conquered Megan the Stallion. At about the time I regained consciousness in Dark Souls 2. And I had arrived at Lordran, the High Wall, and Majula all at once. I fought my way up the Berg, and just as I was walking to Hades Tower, a resident of the High Wall came to inspect the noise of me fighting off my own sanity. I rewarded him by ending his life. Practiced my ninja rolling techniques, which weren't very useful, and killed a grandmother. It was at this point that I started to notice a problem. The design of all three games are vastly different. While fighting and exploring in one dimension, I would be falling off a drop in the other. Cheese the Dragon Rider, and I was on my way to Vort the Dog Boy, Forest of the Fallen Giants, and the Lower Berg Skip all at once. We were gonna die in the Dark Souls game, but that wasn't the problem. The problem was evaluating where we would lose the most progression and prioritizing the cost of the loss of progression itself. So that meant having a plan to beat each of the games in the most time effective way possible. What I decided was, since we would be fighting a boss like Taurus Demon in one game, I would go in Dark Souls 3 and try to level up in Firelink Shrine. Systematically setting up the boss fights so that they're one right after the other so that we have enough time to fight each boss properly. And doing them in a specific order where we wouldn't lose progress from one game and gain it in another. But after acquiring the boss fight and finishing it, we would move on and progress together. Without losing souls from dying. I ran my way to the undead parish and settlement as I was making my way to the pursuer. And jumped off a ledge in two games while I was getting the keys to the basement. Started the Gargoyles fight on my way to the Abyss Watchers while still having trouble getting to the Pursuer. I finally cheesed the Pursuer while leveling up at Ended Parish and Firelink Shrine simultaneously. Made it to the last Bastille as I was twirling in circles in front of the Abyss Warriors. So now I'm going to explain the plan for beating the games. The goal in Dark Souls 2 for beating the game as fast as possible without glitches is basically getting a million souls to forgo the four shard bearers, which will avoid three other areas I don't have to go to. In Dark Souls 1 it's about ringing the two bells of awakening and finding the easiest upgrade path possible. And in Dark Souls 3 it's about getting as much upgrades for your weapon as soon as possible and finishing the any percent route. I proceeded to the catacombs, Blight Town, and No Man's Wharf while trying to avoid Nido's testicles along the way. After killing Flex Tape Sentry, it was time to abandon all hope and leap into several pits of despair. We were again trying to tackle three difficult areas all at once. Made sweet sensual love to an anthropomorphic humanoid spider, and ran through Compton trying not to get gunned down as we grabbed some more upgrade materials in Dark Souls 3. Killed a sack of shit and then killed another sack of shit with the funniest name in From Software history. Slapped an exotic dancer's booty. Let me recap the progress so far. We had rang the first two bells of awakening in Dark Souls 1. Killed one of four rottens in Dark Souls 2, and made our way into Lothar Castle for higher upgrades, which meant that I needed the last two bonfire ascetics, 
an infusion stone in Dark Souls 3, and to get the crystal halberd in Dark Souls 1 while going to Inner Londo. And we had arrived at the top of Sen's fun house, while I ran to the ulcerated tree spirit, and made myself feel better with a little cock and ball torture. After making the iron giant slip on a bar of soap, I slayed another shit bag. Now more than ever I felt the strain of traversing three dimensions. This is what it must feel like to be conscious in fourth dimensional space. I slayed Najka, the mommy milkers of the scorpion ladies, and dispatched High Lord 420. This is where I found another problem. When I tried to fight ONS in the congregation, the lock-on in Dark Souls 2 was wildly inaccurate. Due to the input running in two games on my PC, it would jump wildly in group boss fights, so it made it far more difficult than it needed to be. I finished off Rosie O'Donnell around the time that I was severed from the mortal coil, killed Great Value Brand Pinwheel, and it was time for round two with the congregation, my favorite boss fight. This time of course being successful, since they're not that difficult in the first place. I was getting ready to fight Sif while I was parkouring through the Deacons of the Deep area, and preparing for my third rotten fight. There's something about two screens with three different video games that give you a migraine. I can't quite place my finger on it, but I was getting a pretty bad headache at this point in the run. When we got to Sif, I was about to kill the Deacons and had entered the Shrine of Winter. We received the Lord Vessel, made our 1 million souls, and got ready for Ithriel, which meant we were about halfway through the game. On my spiritual journey, I was trapped at the frozen hamster wheel of my own mind as I wandered down to New Londo Ruins. After finishing the Four Kings with the first attempt, I took on Tandem Dragon Riders and finished the Pontiff Sullivan, which is one of my favorite boss fights in Dark Souls 3. Barely scraping by the hardest boss in Dark Souls 1 Pinwheel, I killed Hungry Hungry Aldridge, the Devourer of Gods. Worked up an appetite, spanking the looking ass knight, and devoured some of Nito's smoked ribs. I had traversed the Tomb of the Giants, entered the Shrine of Amana, and now it was time for me and my merry band of personality disorders to move through the profane capital. I am a gentleman. I always do the fair thing. That's why when I was offered the option to put Yorm to rest, I did it in the most tedious and painful way possible. I used my longsword instead of the storm ruler. We moved to Upper Lothric, toward the Bed of Chaos, and stood at the midway point of Shrine of Amana. I taunted the flying spaghetti monster by unaliving a living suit of armor and threw a tantrum next to a deathly ill tarantula. Poked an uncircumcised frog until it gave me its lunch money, and I was ready to enter the Grand Archives. We were almost done with all three games, so I celebrated by throwing feces at a wizard. Since I'm an intellectual, I bested a dragon from my personal prison cell and rolled my way up the shaky quakey bridge in Dragon Eerie. After the long arduous journey, we had made it to the Twin Cest Boys and finished them off first try. I'm exceedingly lucky that I spent so many hours in Souls games or else this run would have taken a lot longer. Most boss fights I finished first attempt. Bludgeoned an oversized lizard to death for not understanding that nudity is a sin and killed Daddy's giant disappointment, one of the worst bosses in Dark Souls history. The majority of all three games bested, it was time to offer the Lord Souls seat the shard bearers, and use the king's ring to open the kiln in Dark Souls 2. After nine hours of torment and headaches, we had finally arrived at the final bosses of the games. I ritualistically unalived myself in Dark Souls 1 at the beat of destroying the soul of Cinder. Penetrated Throne Watcher and Throne Defender as I practiced my shell and iron fist on the wall of Dark Souls 3. I'm not going to tell you what I did here because I don't feel like you've earned the right to know and easily parried Hobo Santa Claus into an oblivion, leaving him so traumatized that he would have nightmares even in his afterlife. You may ask yourself, how hard was it to run this? It was exceedingly confusing and difficult, probably one of the hardest runs I've ever done, and far more convoluted than two games at once. And believe it or not, editing it was just as terrible. If you feel like you're missing any of the content from the run, the full run can be watched on YouTube. A link will be in the description. But that being said, I beat Dark Souls 1, 2, and 3 all at the same time on one controller. And that's going to have to do it for this video. If you liked the video, please leave a comment and a like and a share. If you didn't like the video, please leave a dislike and a comment telling me how you didn't like the video at all. Thanks for watching. See you next time.